G'day, Johnny. Roger Clemson. How are you? <laughs> You're right offside, boy. And right. Johnny Warren, that captain of the so Socceroos, good. this is your life. Through the pain of Australian football's long struggle for acceptance, Johnny Warren never gave up the fight. Wog Warren was my nickname at school because I was played football. But they're accepting it now for what it is, the biggest and best game in the world. Born in 1943, the boy from the inner city Sydney suburb of Botany knew his love of football would put him at odds with Australia's entrenched sports. But his passion for the world game always rose above those petty disputes, making a mark both at home and abroad. I know that eventually, though, people will remember the contributions that people like yourself pay to actually put Australian football where it is today. Johnny played top grade club football with Canterbury at the tender age of 16 before joining his beloved St George where he spent 12 highly successful seasons. He's feeding him a speed. Johnny captained his country with pride and wore the green and gold on 62 occasions, scoring nine times. He was an integral part of the 1974 World Cup campaign, the Socceroos' only ever appearance on football's biggest stage after fighting back from a career-threatening knee injury. You don't realise what that team achieved. They were part-time players. They weren't full-time, playing in the, against professionals, um, players who worked and you look back now, you go back to Iran as a commentator and you say, how did our guys beat this team? How did they beat Uruguay? Rated above Uruguay in the 74 World Cup. Part-time players and to all the, all the players and of course the coaching staff, Rally and, and Les and, and the people that are around that team, it was, an, it was an amazing achievement when you look back now. After hanging up his boots in the mid-70s, Johnny moved into coaching with a brief spell at St George and then Canberra City in the newly formed National Soccer League. But it was away from the pitch that Johnny made his greatest impact. Never afraid to speak his mind, he soon became the face of the Australian game. His determination to see Australia succeed again on the world stage was a passion he could never hide as a nation shared his heartbreak after that fateful night when Australia threw away a two-goal lead against Iran. You just feel for them, not just the boys, they are representative of so many people who make this game their life. It's just, uh, I can't say anything. Right? An administrator and commentator, he was an unparalleled authority on all matters football. Despite being diagnosed with lung cancer in late 2002, he continued his mission to spread the word. It has been a huge shock um, and a lot of support from a lot of people, none the least being SBS and yourself and the, the, the guys here who are really like family, so it's been a tough, tough time. Well, good to see you jo uh, back, John, and uh, of course uh, we'll, we're with you all the way. What's Most recently, he played a major role in the federal government's Crawford inquiry into the governance of football in Australia. He also found time to write and promote his autobiography, Sheila's Wogs and Poofters. Despite deteriorating health, Mr and Mrs Soccer, the story of his friendship with Les Murray, was published. His lifelong devotion to the game earned Johnny many accolades, including an MBE, an OAM, a place in the Sports Hall of Fame, and perhaps his favourite award, the Centennial Order of Merit from football's world governing body, FIFA. We've got to stop talking about where we're going to qualify. We've got to start talking about where we're going to win World Cups. And if Turkey can do what they did and South Korea, Japan, if Greece could win the Euro Championships, there's a message there for us that champion teams beat teams of champions. And there's a big message there for Australian soccer. Johnny lived to see the launch of the new A-League competition. His attendance while suffering in his final days says more about the man and his devotion to the game he loved more than any words could express. So the final word goes to the man himself, who wants to be remembered this way when Australian football finally comes of age. I told you so. I told you so. We've campaigned for so long. We've beaten against doors of trying to have the game accepted, that this what a great game it is that Australia can become with, a, with this great sporting nation who has yet to embrace fully the world's greatest game. When I'm up the big football field in the sky, I just want, want people just to remember I told you so.